He is our senior from Forest Nine. So I'm 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 really happy to have him here because he's somebody I look up to. Before I, I reached out to him, I I I, I checked around on, on Slack. I, I I have seen what he has been doing. So it was really encouraging. So I had to reach out to him that okay, there are other of us like this that are going to need um, his help. And and something like that, he's not even waste time on it. He was he was even the one who came and said, okay, there's no problem. I will also help out. Okay. So please, whatever he's going to say here today, I want us to pay attention and 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 also um, try to learn from him. Okay, if you have your questions, please write them down and when you open the floor for you to ask a question, we ask him, it's easier for us today. So let's be sure that we will gain as much as possible from him. So right now I'm going to I'm going to welcome our our, our guest, our big guest, Elisha Benjamin. Please boss, you can actually unmute your mic now and speak to us. We're happy to ask. Yeah. All right, good afternoon. Thanks so much, David, for the introduction. And it's nice to see all of you here. And it's a pleasure. We are very happy to have you, sir. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, uh, I'm really happy that I'm giving the platform to interact with you guys and also discuss the project program. So before I go further, I think there are other questions that, like Ibrahim just asked, that the previous project I have been given, he finds out that uh, you need to understand them before you'll be able to tackle the green air project entirely, which is true, totally true. Because all those projects, they are introducing you to those concepts so that at the end, you'll be able to build something with it. So if you don't understand those concepts, those previous concepts, it will be difficult for you to tackle this project uh, and the green air project. So, the plan that I have today uh, is to show you how to break down because I was having difficulty also initially when I started this program, uh, how to break down my projects into pieces and tackle them bit by bit. So I did so many research before I get better, better over time. So even the print of project, it took me time, it took me a while. I was not even to tackle it within what uh, the first deadline. Because I'm not alone, it's a group project, so we're doing it, so it took time. But what I want you to know is uh, the projects that you've been given, I know that there is a time bound to it, but the main essence of it is for you to gain the knowledge and try and understand everything like what Ibrahim is saying that, okay, he's looking at the time, time is running, he's not on his side, and he needs to understand those things why, again, he needs to do the project. So the most important thing that I will advise everyone here, um, using Ibrahim as a point of contact, uh, uh, try and understand those things. So today, we'll try and look at all those topics in brief, what they are and how we are going to use them, how we are going to implement them into these projects so that you can go back and sit down and look at those things now and again. Then you yourself will be able what, to tackle all those projects and be able what, to break down your project into pieces, then solve them in modular. We call it modularization. So that's it. So much of the introduction, let's jump into the main day. So I'll be sharing my screen also for the printed project from my own end here. So, so that we'll just go through each and every of the concepts. But before we do that, from what I've said so far, does anyone has any question that wants to show? Hi, Aisha, how are you doing? Good evening. I'm doing fine. Yeah, um, nice to have you. We feel very, very honored. But I'd like to ask, like, what do you want to take us on now? Um, now, what I want to take you, what I want to take you on now, is yeah. to is to break down this project into modular, into modularize the projects for you guys. Then look at the uh, topics or the concept that you need to watch. To understand before you be able to tackle these projects. So what we'll be doing is looking at these particular concepts, then see how they fit into the printf 
project itself. So if you have that understanding, you can go ahead and solve the entire project without even having to worry. So we can continue there because the entire thing is all about research understanding. So I guess I answered your question. Yes, so we are starting from this project, the particular project we are doing, right? Yes, that's the printed project. We are starting at the beginning, we are not jumping anything. Okay, thank you very much. Right. So, is there any other question? Okay. Excuse me, somebody has a question, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, please. Yes, I'm sorry, good evening. Good evening. All right, so um, my first thing is, uh, I joined this because uh, myself I've been struggling with a number of the projects. Yes. I end up having to uh, do some of the projects without fully understanding it up until this point where we've gotten to. It's all beginning to look very... Uh, he just to me like I'm really struggling with it. So what we are going to go through is it going to tackle? I know it's not going to tackle everything from like a very scratch, but from what point are we looking at? Uh, are you going to tackle so that at least for somebody who has not really gotten a hands on the whole programming thing to this point, we'll be able to um, follow through to 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 the end. Okay. All right. So these are the topics that we want to look at. Definitely going to look at uh, uh, validating functions. We're going to look at function pointers. We're going to look at structures and type definitions. Then we're going to look at dictionary. Then we're going to look at memory allocation, which is using malloc and also how to free up memory spaces. So these ones that I just mentioned now, we'll be able to solve the problem. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. So, Sally, go ahead, please. What do you mean? Sally, I can't hear, I can't hear you. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. No, we're going to tackle it this night. We're just going to look at it. I guess you've read about it and you have basic knowledge already. You know what it is. So now we're just going to uh, demystify it. Okay. What it is all about, what actually it is. Sometimes it's the way you approach it, the way you see it. So now we give, we're going to give you a new perspective to it. But I guess you've already gone through the material. So me coming now, explaining this. It will throw more light on it. You understand? So, because even me during the course of reading it, the first time I'm introduced to it, I find it difficult to understand it because I was made, missing some key uh, information or some key ideas about the entire concept. So, it's those key ideas that will help you to understand it better. So, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, that's what we'll try to do to explain to you today so that you will see how they are being applied even to this project. So I hope I answer your question. But that said, so let's jump into it. Let's start with, I'll share my screen now. Can you all see my screen? 
Yes, yes. Yes, right. I can see it. All right. So, uh, this is the printf project itself. And you can see from here, this is the authorized function and macros that you can use in the project. So, by basically looking at this, they are already telling you what you need to understand and uh, to tackle this project. So you can see you have to know, understand, you have to know how to use the right um, function. You have to know how to use malloc. You have to know how to use the free function. You have to know how to use the paradigm um, variables. That's the var start ma uh, macro, the var end macro, and the var copy, the var arc macro. So understanding this, you are good to go for based on the project, how we're going to break it down. So that's why we're introducing dictionary, we're introducing function pointers. Then I'm also trying to introduce what structure and type definition so that it will help you what structure the program so that you'll be able to what, focus on one problem at a time. Like if you're handling the uh, integers, you focus on handling integer. If you're handling um, a strings, you focus on handling strings. So let's look at what uh, write function is all about. So let's just create. Hello, sir. Please, can you help us uh, make the record of this training, please? Because it's very important. Okay. Can David do that? David? The, the meeting is being recorded. I announced that nobody should worry about that. Please, if you don't mind, mute your mic and just relax and watch the meeting. Okay. Let me use the web terminal. is large enough right yes yes, yes. Okay. so i just want to see the directory let's create a folder that will just be working from there so, let me just create a So now we just want to test to see how write functions or what is all about how we can use it so i'll just create sorry it give back it give back hello is that a give back Hello? Bye, sorry. GIT. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, please. Can you put send your questions to the chat box so that we'll tackle it from there? You won't be distracted. So now uh, we'll just create a normal a main function. So we'll just call it.
I'm just I'm just adding my uh, standard libraries that I'm going to make use of here. So that's where I explain it. So let's assume we just want to print um, print something on the uh, standard output as on your shield. You want to print it using uh, C program. Um, I know we've been introduced to print car, printer. So, but at the back of it, they use what we call what uh, write to do this to perform this action. So. In the course of this, since we are writing our own from scratch, we don't want to be using those print car, uh, print uh, that's the printer. So we're going to be creating our own. So, but the function that is available for us to use is the write function. What write function does basically it takes in two uh, three parameter. The first parameter it takes it takes does um where he's going to do the printing. Is he going to print it on the standard error output or is he going to print it on normal standard output? Or it takes in what? The strings that he's going to what print. Basically, it's a buffer. So it holds what? An array, it's an array of strings. So the third parameter that it takes is the number of strings that he's going to what? Print out. So let's assume now we'll just create what a string uh, car. Let's just say str. Just to say what? Can I say something, please? Hello? Can I say something, please? Yes, go ahead. How do you give them a coding like how would you know how to skip a number? Like for, for example, how will you know where this IMT will be IIT main will be? How will you know that what? The way you arrange them, how will you keep them accordingly? Can you put them as maybe number one, number two, number three, number four, like that? Okay, the files that I'm creating. Yes, yes. Okay, this file I just created it is just a sample file, so that I will just explain what write is all about. So we okay. haven't gone, we haven't started the project deep. We just want to understand what we need to understand for us to because calculate. because when you write include, then you type, you maybe you put you type enter from your keyboard, it will give you another number. Are you going to be following the numbers like that? I mean writing. Okay, no, don't need to. What I want you people to focus today, just focus on what we are doing. You understand the concept that we are introducing you to. Don't worry about writing these codes. Since he's recording the video, you get the video. So I think I have to obstruct this thing a little bit. Guy, just calm down. Let him finish what he's doing. They are recording it, be cool. So just try and follow and understand the, the concept that I'm introducing you to now. So since we have a string, so we want to print a string now. So uh, instead of using printf, I can use what we call what write. And what write takes, it takes, uh, we have, okay, let me, so that we'll see it, or let me open another time. Yeah, same thing. For so this, I will just say, man, write. So that will see the documentation. So for here, you see write utility allow you to what to communicate with other users by uh, copying lines from your terminal to gears. So just basically message board. I want us to see the real usage here.
So, all right. Uh, I think I don't have it here. Let's continue from this one. Now, when I'm doing it, I'll explain better. So, I can have one. So, one means the standard output. So, just like this that we have here, this shield here, this standard output, like if I do echo now, what I'm saying is, if I say echo, hello, If I enter, you can see it's printing out on this screen. So that's the standard output that we're talking about one. So this particular place now that is printing it out is the standard output that we are talking about. So and how the C program understands this, there is a value for each of these. Sometimes when you it's like you have an error, let's make this. Let's see. Let's just create an error. My network is slow. So this is a command that does not exist. So but let's try it. You can see now it's saying bash word zero uh, eo command not found. So this particular one that he just print now, he's printing it on the error standard output. This one that printed up successfully, there is not an error, is the normal standard output that he printed on. This is not the error standard output. So there is a standard output, there is error standard output. That one is for errors. So well, for this one, this one is represented with one, and this one is represented with two. So in our own program that we are writing, we are saying, okay, what I want you to print, I want you to write something on what, on the standard output. So that's why I'm giving you the command one. Then now I'm saying that, okay, this, you are taking this string in, this particular string that I just created here. That's what I'm passing to it. So how many characters do I want him to print from these particular strings? If I say I want him to print just one character and I close this here, and at the end of each of our main function, we have to return what zero. Because it's expecting us what to return a number. So we'll just save this and just try to we'll say GCC. Let's compile this, we call it what? Sorry, please. I think you should check the return. The return wasn't spelled too well. No worry. It's the arrangement that I did. So just give it five. Good same name. So we're having error here, but don't worry. We'll figure it out what it's saying. So I must have missed something. So one in implicit declaration of function. Right. Do you mean F right?
this by the air flight zeros. The right supposed to work. The spelling for the return is not correct. The return? Okay, spelling. Okay, sorry. That's true. Hello, please see your screen. I'm not the only one that is uh, seeing it like that. You minimize the screen, please. The screen? Yeah, the screen is minimized. It's minimized? I didn't mean Yeah. Okay. It's okay. I, I don't think it will be. Can you see it again? Check your screen, please. Can you see it now? It's big enough here. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Let me. When when you move your cursor to um, the particular screen you want to see, you will see a, a, a pin. When you press that, it will, it will maximize the, the particular page on your screen, so it becomes bigger. I think he needs to share the screen again. Oh, you can't see it. We can't see this your screen. Uh, um, I, I can. Uh, excuse me. This I think you. The screen is okay. If you can't yeah, see, I'll why do you own as your own end? Yes, please, guys. Let's not I'll interrupt, see. please. I'm resharing. I'm resharing. Don't worry. I'll resharing. <laughs> Sorry, just give me a minute. I want to change my network. Sure. Just give me a minute, would you? So. Bob. So can you see the screen now? Yes, we can see. No, it. not yet. I yes. can't see it myself. Yeah, we can see it now. All right, all right.
All right, you can see that it does print H here, right? So but let me go back and correct it so that we'll see it on another line. Then we'll move from there. Um, so the library that I supposed to introduce was the uh, universal standard header. header. Yeah. should please follow me i'm having trouble with networking faster than this so, so you can see because we choose to print only what one character so that's why it's printing the h so let me see card wow. so now we'll see what we're writing So you can see from here what what I what we're doing. We're just saying that okay, you should write to what to standard output. Then take what this particular word string that we have a buffer should take it in. Then what print only what one character. If we make it two character, four character, or oh, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If we want to print print everything. We have to put in what eleven then we're going to print what the entire uh string to what to this particular what standard uh output so if we want to print to standard error we put what our two here also so i think we're through with right so that's how to write to what without even using what print f i just use print f here to just what print next line immediately after what and the character printing so I didn't use um, put car to do this. So I use what the right function to do that. So that's what they are expecting us to use to add what the print uh, print uh, project. So having this clarified now, we'll look at the next word, uh, the next topic, which is what uh, we'll be looking at what memory allocation, unlock, and what uh, free free memories. So let's go into that uh, play this screen. All right, from here, is there any question so that we'll answer this one? Hello? Okay, Hello. Good evening. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good evening. Yes. If, at, if at all we are to print the entire string, yes in the place in place where you uh, actually place one there can we put 11 11 so it will print 11 characters yes that's what um, i mean so okay. that one that we say we just say that okay print the first character so you okay. you are the one to decide okay how many characters do you want to print inside the entire world the entire okay, stroke okay, okay. So all right thank you very much you, yes and if you put any number that is more than what is inside what that string that you pass to it it's going to what print the entire string you understand then return the the actual number that you what it print and uh, that it writes to the standard uh output so you can decide or oh, is it on the error you want to print out for a two or you want to print it out on the standard output okay uh i i know this might be overwhelming anyway if i thought we have a a long list of uh, characters that you can't yes. even count i i don't know how we are going to do that you can't start 
counting all of them one after the other. You are not meant to count characters. That's why the computer is there to do these things for you. So you oh, okay. do it programmatically. So even oh. when we are doing the printf, we paste it. There is going to be a loop that is going to what, keep counting this character. Oh, 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 we are we can actually use all those uh, looping yes. to loop over the entire characters. Okay, so fine. Thank yes. you so much. So once you loop, you already know okay, this is how so this is the number of characters, then you just pass it. That's why your variables are there for you to what, take advantage of. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you. So let's look at uh malloc now. This so like this. Leave this. So if I write anything now, so there's what we call uh memory what allocation. So in the memory, memory uh the your computer memory is what uh it's just like a box it has different what codes box that it keeps what these data zeros and ones so it allocates it there is what we call dynamic allocation so when the memory when your program is running like the one that we are running now what we did is a static memory allocation this string that we give it to we say car asteroid uh string is equal to this i will show us something now so that we'll understand how this thing works oh. Oh. like these characters now that you are seeing on the screen this particular one that we did now what this program will do is that it doesn't allocate this memory when this program starts running Immediately we declare this thing now, it's already allocated a memory in our in our machine, in the program. Once the program is loaded, the memory is allocated to it. So it's not during when the program is running, it started printing some things on the screen that the memory is being allocated to it uh, for that particular word, uh, action. So like now, once we declare it this way, we declare it, the memory is automatically what allocated. So to be able to what dynamically allocate memory, we need to use what malloc. There's what a function called what malloc to help us what uh, dynamically allocate memories. So, and what this does, if I write another, uh, car, I say string two equals to same thing I say is hello world what the computer will do it won't go ahead to what to create another of this string because the way we declare it is immutable you can't change these values in this particular string you can fully assess them so what it does is once you do this on your, on your um, hit memory, on your stack memory, it is going to what? Since this and this are the same, it won't create another one. He will just point this second one to the same string that was already what created in the memory. So now, if this string this first string and this second one, they are pointing to the same string in the memory because the computer, since this one and this one are the same string, is going to do what? Uh, store it just once in the memory. So because nobody is allowed what to temper with this what static memory. So there is what we call what heap memory also. So heap memory is being given to you. So the size can expand, can increase what uh, during your during execution the size of the heap can increase. But for the static, once the program, this particular program now is loaded for running, it's been given a process uh, by our processor to start running. It can be changed. We can't change the size. So it's static. 
So but for the heat, you can what keep what increasing it, it can increase over time. So we use malloc what what to manage that particular word memory. So for this one now they are the same. So that's what I wanted to explain to you that we can we can only assess this, but we can't change it. So let me give you an instant. Let's say now we want to print this string. Now we want to print F. Okay, sorry. To print F at A str we just see what i'm trying to say so let me say i want to print just a character just a character i want to print from this so i can assess this you know it's indexed this index zero one two three four and so forth so i just want to assess what mm, let me say the seven character so once I do this, see it print what the character at that particular index right so now let's see something let's try to change so let's try to change this guy and assign another value at that same spot at seven so let's say str at zero. Or let's say at, uh, let's give it one, the first index. We want to change it. We want to assign small letter h to it. Okay. Let me give this place here. So we just want to assign h to this particular place. We want to change this particular value to this here see what will happen here just watch uh, so you can see we are having what segmentation what fault hold on so this is another reason why you keep getting what segmentation okay so what is happening is why we're getting this segmentation error is because we cannot change a string that is declared that way. Any string that is declared this way, we cannot what change it. So there is another string that we can what we can change it is mutable. So what they mean by mutable that you can't change their values. You can only what assess it. So let's create another one. Let's see. So this say this string two. I would say is four characters. Thank you. 
directly this is called So you can see here when I declare it, when I assign, yeah, this is what capital meter. Well, when we did that first one for star SDR, we get segmentation fault that we cannot what. He didn't give us the exact word, but that's why it's happening because this string we can't change their values. But if we declare a string this way, this string is mutable. That means that we can reassign values to what to a particular word, string at a particular index in the entire string. So this particular one now is not actually declared in what in the stack memory, it's in the heap. So now just look at what will happen once we run this program. Let's see. This. So you can see we're able to what to print that one at h we didn't temper with it but you can see at index zero now when we declare it is what was it was capital h but now we are able to change it to what small letter h so that's how this particular what things they behave the way you declare a string matters a lot if you can change its value or not so if you declare it this way you can't change its value but if you declare it this way, you can change its value. And during declaration, you must make sure you know what the size of the string. You must pass what this size is to it. So that's it. There is another one that we're really looking at. Another mutable allocation that you can do is the malloc. So let's assume now one to what? Want to still do this hello world. This time around, we want to what allocate a memory so that we'll be able to what to assign hello world to. So that's where malloc comes in. So and what malloc does is it creates the memory, then return a void pointer to what to the first uh, the first um, memory uh, address. So because if you create a memory in a machine. It comes in a contiguous uh, form. That means each byte follows each other in form of what? An array. Then the first address of those boxes, that's what it returns to you. So it gives you that. Then you'll be able to what? So I trade through the entire word memory, following what? The addressing. So now let's assume we want to find a memory to save hello world in it. Let's call this uh, sister. Let's pick this guy three. You say it's equals to of malloc. So what malloc does is it takes what? The entire number of what? Of byte. It saves them in what? In byte. But each machine, like 64-bit, uh, save a particular word character in one byte. Then an integer, it saves it what? In um, four bytes. So well, you don't know which machine your program is run on. So there is what you'll be able to know that, okay, if you are on this machine, the byte size may change. How the machine handles his byte allocation for integers how he handles the allocation for string down uh, for character. So what you will do is there is a function called what type uh, size of what size of does is 
it takes any type of what uh, it takes a variable and gives you back what the size of that variable for that particular word machine that you are using. So if you say size of ah here, that's the character. So he's going to allocate if this size of uh, size of car is two, he's going to return two. So malloc is going to allocate what two memory block. So if he's returning two and you say times seven or times eleven, sorry. So we are saying that oh, since we are, we are we want to save what eleven characters and each character, this guy is going to return to what the size of the character for this particular mission for us. And since we know that okay, one character is two byte, which we don't actually know what is going to return here or whatsoever he returns it. That means if we times it by eleven, we'll be able to have enough memory what to save these guys inside. So what you what we can do now, since we have the memory block now, we have seven. So there's what you use to check. Once this thing fails, if it's not if you didn't have enough memory what to create you didn't create the memory that you need, it's going to what throw null. So this guy is going to what have no save in it. So that's how you'll be able to know that okay. And uh, he actually allocate the memory to you or not. So if you didn't allocate the memory and you try to assess the memory block, it's going to throw segmentation fault again. That's another way that you encounter the segmentation fault. So you can say if str three is equals to no. So that means this guy definitely is going to what if it fails, it's going to be no at the initial at the address. So if it is no, we just want to what to end the program. We we'll just uh we'll just return one. That's to say our program was not what successful. So, but if it didn't fail, we can say str three at the first address zero. We can assign it h. Mm -hmm. Then we can do this for let's say. Still, since we are running up, try and rush so that we cover more. I'm dwell on this. Let's reduce this to two so that we'll be able to explain what we're doing. We don't have to keep writing. A lot. So you can see now what I did here was a dynamic memory allocation because now this memory is after when the program starts running that this memory is going to be what allocated. After you allocate, it will come here and what assign a value to it. But you can see at this particular point, what I did here was immediately I what I assigned the memory. And any declaration of what a string like this, it goes to what to your static, uh, to the static uh, memory. So, but well, any declaration like this, it goes to what to your heap. And any memory allocation like this, it still goes to your what to your heap also. So those are the two memory structures that you have that can be assigned to what, to your program. So, with this now. We can decide to what we clear this once. I don't need them. Let's do this once. Get this one out.
I can just come here and say, okay, I'm printing the entire word string to the next line. I'll just pass it the entire string. Okay. I'll run it again. So you can see we dynamically allocate a memory and we what we print it out. So let's do something. Let me show you something again. There's what we call background. Let's run it through background to monitor what what's happening, how our memory is after execution. So the background is just a tool for you what to see your memory after your program has been run. So you can see it here. This is the command that we run, our file command, our executable file that we generated. So you can come down here, you see heap memory. You can see the heap that I'm talking about. Heap memory in use at exit is two bytes. You know we are located two bytes, right? So you can see that it's saying what? Two. So total heap use is two allocated, then one free, 100 and something bytes allocated. So leak memory definitely lost two bytes of memory in one block. So after our program has finished running, instead of us to clear that memory, to allow it free for other programs to make use of, there are some redundant data that are saved here. So that's where free comes in. Whenever your program finish running like this, you should free up the memory so that other processes can have access to those memory so that you will, your machine will not run out of memory. So that's the dynamic memory management that they are talking about. So whenever you are assigning memory to something, you free it at the end. So you can see that we lost what two bytes at the end of it when our, mem when our program has finished running. So we can fix that with what? With free. So if you do this, let's go back to our file or program. So here, after printing, before we return, we can decide to what? And decide to say, okay, free of that memory that we allocated, which is what? ST3 it up before you would you return so what this would do it will free up our what's our memory for us so let's see let's try to run it again let me clear this So you, you know, so just look at this same. This is a command that we are running. So all he blocked free. So you can see at the end of it, total he used during running the program. There are two that we use. So but you can see, in use at exit, when we are exiting our program, the memory was what? Was freed. It was what? It was freed. So uh, when you are writing our function, we need to what? In case that we've already allocated the memory and the program did not succeed, we need to free up the memory before we even exit. So that's where we're going to be what? Using these things. So malloc is to just for us to assign what a particular memory block. Then after using it, we use our three what to free of that particular what memory block. So and also we look at how uh, strings you can de declare strings in different what different ways and actually how the what the in the the program runs them. So those strings that you assign directly 
by what by global code they are saved directly into your work into your stack memory so let me open this again so you can see how we work we're able to assign if it is an integer we want to what to assign to this we say type of what an int We'll just say int, so it's going to allocate what space for what one integer, two space for an integer. So whatsoever that data type that we want to use here, we're going to allocate the memory for it there. So and this for what this how we free up the memory space. So we don't need to free up any uh, allocation that we did on heat because automatically our system will want to clear it. So from this point, I would like to take questions on particular this particular topic that we do. If anybody has something wants to ask. Yeah. Um, good evening. Can I good evening. go ahead? Yes, go ahead, please. All right. Uh, my first question is um, thank you very much. First of all, you are I mean it's very clear the way you are explaining. Now my question goes to Yes. Malloc. Yes. Um, if I know the size of, um, um, let's say an inch or a car. Yes. I already know the size. Why yes. did I still need to use the size of command? That is one. Okay. Then the second one is that what is it? What? Why? Why should I really allocate memory? Dynamically. The function of Malloc. Does it really need? Okay, so very good. So your first question, let me answer your first question. Your first question is, if I already know the int and the size of it, so why would I go and use size of? So imagine a scenario that, okay, we just write this program now. We are a team of developers now. We just develop this program now. And we are using what? a 64-bit system to do it. So we already know that what integer is four bytes on 50 uh 64 bit system and car is just what one byte so and we are just using that we come here to to just say okay since i already know i'm going to save a character and character is just one byte and i'm saving what i'm saving six of it so let me just say i'm saving what six of it i'll just put six here then i come here i would allocate what the memory but mind you that your program now is limited. It can only be what run successfully on what 64-bit system. So to make it that in such a way that it can run on 64-bit system and 34-bit system or any other system uh, um, architecture, you have to use what that type of because you won't be there when they are running it. You won't have to go and start going back to your code that, okay, now we want to run it on a uh, 34-bit system, and that 4-bit system is using, uh, let's say, for integer or for character, is using one, then for, uh, or let's say we are, using, we are saving int and it's using four, it's using two. So now we want to change it to two. Imagine we have tons of codes so are we going to go and start changing them so that it will fit into that as it will? What is that if we just do that type of and just leave it so that sorry, the type of size of. So once we just do this size of, whatsoever system that is being run on is going to return what? Let me see. going to return what the how that system allocates its memory for what for car if that system if it is 32 that allocate two bytes of data uh space sorry uh for a character is going to return what two then you do his multiplication two times two which is four then he allocates four for that particular machine so if it is a machine like our own that is in 64 the character is what one byte you just go ahead and what return one for here 
automatically without you being have without you having to go back into your code and start doing some editing. So that's why we are using always using what size of is advisable so that your program can run on different system architecture. So that's been said. Uh, the second question that you you ask, why are we using malloc? Check in the situation that okay, you are trying to create um, memory. Let's say now I want to create a string. I call it star, right? Um, car. Let's just give an x and car. Then I have limit this. See. see one problem that we have with this declaration here once we declare this we can't change this string and we can't assign any other value into this particular string we're only limited to what hello world the only thing that we can do we can access this particular string but to change these strings to change the values that are inside this particular word pointer. We can't do that. So we are limited. So, and again, there's another one. If we say, okay, we are limited. What about this one now that uh, we can actually change what? This is the one. Is another declaration let's say level okay so now this another one this one now we are not just limited to this we can actually change these values we can come down and say okay based on some kind of depends on what we want to use our program for maybe if a user enter that okay all lower case so instead of printing these guys that he wants to change the value in this we want to change the value in this particular memory back to lower cases and invert them then this one the lower cases we want to turn them back to upper case uh upper case we won't be able to do that but with this we'll be able to do that right but the instruction here says that if you are following the syntax says that what at the point of declaration we have to what, declare the size so imagine in a program that someone is passing a value here when running it and we don't actually know the size so are we saying that okay we are going to allocate a big memory space for that particular word variable no but what malloc does it helps us to work to manage those spaces very well in such a way that we don't actually know the size of the what of what the size of the memory that we need so it's at the point of what running the program the program will be what dynamically what allocating those memory and deallocating them using our what our free. So that's why malloc is very very good for allocating what memory to manage our memory. So that dynamically we will allocate those memory and at the same time what we deallocate them so that we will free our memory, we'll be able to manage our memory. Our machine will not go and what and cra crash because there is no enough memory. The memory has been allocated to so many different uh, programs, which we didn't free, even at the end when the program stopped running, the memory is still there. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. So so please, I have a question, sorry. OK. I've been raising my hand. I was thinking that's the normal format, but I think it's not being followed here again. Okay, sorry. Please, I'm following you using code block right here. Okay. And then I did exactly what you did here, like typing the um, chas uh, pointer string str to hello. Yes. Then I changed it to h and printed it, and it's printing on my screen. I don't know if it's because of compiler, but it's printing here. Here it's not printing. That's one. And number two question is, if actually you are allocating a memory like char star string, then that's square bracket. You're not putting any value. 
then you equal to your string, it will still print. Do you really need to put that 11 in terms of memory allocation? I don't even understand my question. I understand your question. So the 11 that you're putting, definitely you will need to what? To declare that 11, to say that okay, this is the size of what? The string. The 11 has to be there. If not, we're going to get that. What I'm saying is that, I understand. Even if you don't put that in, okay, all right. What you are, I don't know uh, the uh, the code the uh, code editor you are using or how your compiler is. You know we have different compilers, but the one that we are using in, in LX is what GCC, right? Hello, Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Right. Can hear you. So. so the one that we are using in LX is GCC. So, but I don't know exactly the one that you are using. But if it is GCC, you are I'm using. If it is I'm GCC, still compiling with GCC. Okay. So, you're supposed to throw that, what, that error for you. But I don't know why it's compiling. So, I will check, I'll look at it, then maybe uh, we'll reach out, okay, why it's like that. But the normal convention, the normal syntax, you have to what, declare what your 11 saying that, okay, this is the number of what characters that I want to what, save inside. And if we declare 10 and we are passing uh, or 11, we have segmentation error because there is no enough space and we are trying to what, assign to that particular space. So that's it for that. For Since you are using that, if you can use what we are using also, use the you use the sandbox also to try as we are going, you will see your errors are coming out the way it should. So but I will look at why that is running on your own system. Or if anyone has a reason why it's only happening that way, you can help us out. Somewhere you can go ahead, please. Somewhere. You're raising your hands. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you. You already left the topic where I still want to ask on it. It's the previous one that you touched on, uh, where you explained rights, the rights yes. command. So yes. as as you are coding, I'm following you with my PC right here. And then um, I was having an error when I tried running the program, but I was able to resolve it by changing because you wrote, um, you included the standard input and output library, and you also included the um, standard um, STD LIB. So, but I did the same thing and I was having an error. So, to solve the error, because it was not recognizing the right function, so to yes. solve it, I had to change the standard library to uni standard. That is U-N-I-S-T. So that's when it started recognizing it. So yeah, we've solved, we've solved that. Thank you so much, Samuel. Yeah, um, please, how, in, in case of like future, um, for future purposes, how would you know yeah. which particular library to import for a particular function? So once you know the function, there is what we have man manual. That's what I went to look at the other time when I was solving the problem. So let me show you something. So, okay. Uh, let's see. This. This. So like for the right now, you can say man what, uh, man three, say what right this is a documentation okay so yeah okay. let me just do the right this is a documentation here it will give you the libraries that you're supposed to use. 
through like this. Now, if you come here, description. Let's see. So why I left this one the other time is because it didn't give me the particular library that I'm looking for. Still where to do it. But on the internet, you can always find it there. Each one has what? Sorry, let me check the documentation on that. Please just give me. Can you see this screen that I open? Hello? Yes, I can see it. You can see the one that has the right three Linux man page. Yeah. So that's where you can always Google it and just get it. You can see here he's saying what? Uh, this is the library that you need to, to include to get it done. You can see. So all the functions, once you already know the function, once you come here and search his documentation, his usage, it will tell you the entire usage, the flags that it has, how it goes. So even if it is, uh, let's say it's printf we are looking for. You can see the printf here. We can look at this screen. There are different version of it. You can see it's telling you that printf needs what standard input output. You understand? Is that understood now? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Sure, sure. So that's how you look at you look out for them. So they you are allowed to use the internet to look out for these things. It's not that you with you stick to your words your memory as you keep using them but as you're starting now it will allow to yes so that time that will hello yeah uh i have one more question the you use a program called bow Bank. yes is, is it um part of what ls gave us or you just is something that you use personally it's part of what they give us, and I find fun in using it because it helps me check how I manage my memory. It gives me a report on the program that I write. If there is any way there is a memory leakage, I'll be able to know. Okay, please, can you just demo it again? Because I just installed it, and I have no clue on how to use it. Okay, you'll just say background. As you say background, then the command you are running, the program that you are running, like in our case, we are running what file? That's the executable file that we are running from our own end here. So once you press enter, it will start doing this magic. It will tell you, okay, the command that you are running, what is the command that you are running? It will give you so many distance, the memory that it allocates, how the memory at this particular memory, star length, so, 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 is it, he assigns some memory at this particular address and at this address he did this he did this so you can see the addressing also what he did so it gives you he analyzed the entire program for you then at the end it gives you your heap okay this heap, this particular memory that you have been giving your uh, computer reserve for you for your program when it's running so at the end you know that okay when your program finish executing at exit 
he wasn't consuming what you are not yet having any memory leak so all of them they are free so we use we actually use our heap memory two memory blocks they are being allocated then at the end of the, the two are being freed so we don't have any leakage i didn't mean we have any leakage it will show us here that okay we have the leakage so that's just what this is all about so that you'll be able to see because when you run the program you'll be able to see when there is memory leakage so but what vagrant does it gives you those analysis i hope that's clear yes thanks so all right with that being said so let's go to um pointers and what or function pointers let's look at that also then we'll look at what dictionary we'll rush the um function pointers so let me clear my screen okay so here now we have uh let's still use our file down here so uh we've we have looked at pointers we've looked at what string is we've looked out um, addressing memory addressing in our system so each byte has a particular word address in our system and whenever uh, uh, a system is allocating memory to us it's giving us memory most of the times they do it in what uh, contiguous form that means in an array form that the first memory that if it's assigning eight bytes is the first byte maybe you're going to have address of zero zero one and most definitely the second one is going to have zero zero two the third one is going to have zero zero three the fourth one is going to have zero zero four and so forth so those memories they will follow each other but what the computer will return to you is the first memory so it doesn't have to return everything so once you have the first one you already know that okay it's 10 that i requested for so from one to what to 10 those if you keep adding one to each of the memory address it will keep taking you towards to the next block of what the memory so that's how pointers work so there are there are variables normal variables like this one now that we did we say um if i let's say is equals to zero so what this does is uh this is a normal variable this is not a pointer i is not a pointer well if we come here and say and did something like in let's see let me give it x say this and let me see five This is a pointer. So what this does, the variable is not actually what? Saving five. It's saving a memory location where this five is being stored. So it has what? Address. So this one now is just a normal variable that is what? Saving a value, what? Zero. But this one now has a particular what? Address. And if you want to see the address of this one now, you can see what? Uh, print, print F, just do it this, let me explain this to you clearly. So the address that we want to see. Right. 
think it's you. So, yeah. See the address of what S. Let's give me a minute, sorry. I'll be in this so let's say. I hope you guys are reading the error with me. So sometimes I like it through the error so that it gives you more understanding of the program itself. So like now, this is an integer. We can assign what we are assigning directly what um, variable. We have to cast this to what to an address to a pointer. So well, let's not do that. Since I just want to explain the concept, let's do it the right way. Let's not make it complicated. Let's just do this. Let's see. I hope you can still see my screen. Sure, we can. All right. So you have, uh, let's just see. I like using Hello World. So let's take this out. You've seen the error that is true in the. So I was taking, expecting JAWS address of a pointer where I'm throwing two addresses to it. So let me take this. Let's see. You didn't use the right format specifier. So this is a percent S. Supposed to be a percent S. Is that percent a percent S? You, yeah, it seems it's a string. Yeah, yeah, it's trying to print. It's, that was for string. I want to print out a pointer, a an address. If I use okay. it for a pointer, you use percent P. Yes, it's a Okay, it's P that you use. All right. I'll do that. Thank you for that. Let's see this. We use P for this.
So uh, we can see the address is being printed out. This an address in our what in our machine. It has what is the first address of what this particular string that we're seeing here. Okay, let me cut it out. So this particular string here now, this address that we are seeing here is the address of what? This H in this word, in this string that we have that is being returned to us. If we want this particular address now, we can add one to this, add 0x5581, uh, E55. So once you add one to this, you'll be able to what, to access the next memory. If you add another one, making it what, six, we'll be able to access this. So that's how the memory is what being allocated. And this is the address. This is how the address is in the machine. So what I just want to show us is if a memory is being allocated, is the first address that is being what returned to you here that you see here. So to access the other ones, you keep adding what? One to it, just doing simple addition to what? To the string and you keep getting what? The next uh, memory and you can what? You can print it what out using what the print uh, flag. So now that being said, what I want us to look at is what function how this thing does. So there is what we call what double pointers. So what double pointers does is like this string now instead of saving a character address of a character in this particular memory address. It saves for another word. It saves the memory of another memory location. Let's look at how that one also works. So this one, it's a single pointer. It points to what? Just a memory address that this guy has been allocated to. This hello world has been allocated to. So it's just pointing to what? This particular word allocation. But what if we want to save the address of what? Because this guy now is holding the address of this string, right? So now, what if in the case that we want to save the address of this pointer? Because this pointer too is being allocated a memory for him to be able what, to save the address of this one. So we can also save address of this particular word, pointer also. If we do something like this, let's say we say car, since this pointer is of what type, is saving the type of what car, we have to what, mention that is what car, character that is going to what, save also here. So once we do something, double, let me say SS, just to name it, let me just give it PTR. So I like to do it. So if I say it's going to save what the address of this. So by just doing this, what I'm saying is that, okay, give me the address of what, of this guy, save it for me. Then if I come here, and do, and do PTR, we are going to get what? The memory address of this one, not this one. Let's print it out and see what we get.
So you can see the address is different. So I wish I can have this piece that I can show you this. Yes. It's a pointer to a, a function that I want to show. So, but now, this is double pointer. It points to a memory of what? Of another pointer that saves the address of what? That holds the address of a particular word, memory location. So this one is not pointing to a specific uh, value where a value is being saved. But it's pointing what? To this guy. And this one now has the address of what? Where this value is being saved on our computer. So if we want to access this value now, we can access this value through this one. We can say, we can access this by doing this. It as a string, you can actually print it out by getting the address of the first one. Then, say, EP. So that means we are getting the actual value of this. But once we do this, we're going to get the address of this. Hello? Hello. Yes, sir. We are all here. Okay. But here is that. All right. So now, this particular address now that we're saying that is holding this address, I'm trying to explain this in a way that you understand. What at this point that we are declaring this asterisk now, we are just saying that okay, this particular memory location, this particular memory address that is here, this let's assume this is the box now. There's another one here. So we are saying this particular one now, this address, there is address. They don't, um, computer don't see it as S. There's address to it. So this particular S now that we're saying can keep that particular numbers that we are printing outside. Uh, when we print it, you saw it on this system. We are using the P. So now it's keeping this particular address. Then this one now, with the double asterisks, is it can keep address of this one but it can't keep the address of this because it's what is a pointer to a pointer so it can always keep address of what a pointer so it has its use though so because someone will be asking why do we need to be what keeping the addresses of what of these locations why we can just directly use one and just solve our problem and you will see where their uses comes in in print so now like every memory block even this program that we just written now let's say we've written something like uh like this print f that you are seeing now it has been assigned in memory in the memory in our stack memory because this print f now has an address whenever this computer wants to print this now it goes to this word to the first character of what this before it starts running the same thing with our main function our main function what has where it's been saved if we started running this our main function what the stack would do first of all is that it's going to save this particular one in our stack hello world then you come here to execute this, you will declare another word, space, to save what? The address of this particular one. So that's how it keeps doing it. So 
Each particular program has what memory. Each thing that you declare on your particular system, on your program, it has a specific word, memory. So even function, you are defining a function. A function, the first block of what of that function, it was has an address. Also, just the way this one returns the first date. So if we define a function, let's say I'm defining a function outside this. Okay, I see. Um, this function, let me just say it's for it doesn't return anything, and I give it a name f. I say it doesn't take anything in. Um, what it just does is it just prints out. If I come here, let me declare it up here so that it will show everything. So if I come here now, I can still say, okay, print out the Can you see what is happening? So, what I did here, you can see it's giving me address, but this guy is a function. So why am I getting address out and I'm just printing what is address? So that means when I define this, it has an address. So since it has an address, I can keep this address of this function in what in the pointer. I can do something like this. I can say, okay. Just watch this. This is a function I want to save. So I will say something like uh, see what will happen now. I think someone asked the question, why do we do dynamic memory allocation, right? So in this case now, we don't know what size is this function, and we want to save it in the memory. So and we just defined it here, and we need a what? A place to save this so that next time we can what? We can use it. If I come here and I just do F here, I call this function F here. What this function will do, we automatically work execute at this particular point. If I call this here, it will just execute. But this particular function has address where I defined it in the memory is saved somewhere. 
So there are functions that return what? There are functions that return a pointer. Like let's say now, uh, can also make it and say, okay, this function is not returning just what? It's not just printing out something out. We want it to actually what? Return, return a pointer towards the character. So let's see, it's just a string. It's returning for us. And it's up here, we say car string. This guy. What? On. So, by doing this now, we are just saying that what? We are expecting what? A pointer. This function should return what? A pointer. Of what? Of type of what? Character. Here. So whenever we call this function, it's a pointer that is going to what is going to return to us. And inside this function, we define something like hello world. So and it's going to return what the address of this hello world to us here. And we can what save it somewhere here. Next time now, when we are creating, when we are calling this f now, I can say something like uh, car. Asterisk S is equals to what F. Then I can come down here and say what I want to print out S a string. Then I pass it what since its address is returning, I pass it S. So what we did here is that we define a function. But well, what this function does is just create a a string they return the address to us it just create what a string after i create the string and it's been assigned in what in our stack memory if we have the address here this particular string now has the address of this word this first character now it's been returned here so it's going to be what return so and you can see here we are calling what we are calling f here immediately we execute f f is going to what return what a string a pointer an address sorry an address towards a particular word uh to this string where this string is being saved so it's going to return what, what the first address here. And as it returns it, we can actually print out what is inside here. You can see that now this is where this guy is. It's not when we call this guy that is being printed. It's when we print it here. Because now with the address that is being returned is being saved inside what a pointer here. So the pointer here, we are saying that okay, what is being saved in you can address print the content of what that address that is inside what s so let's run this program and see then i'll show you then we'll look at how to do for function because we're going to need function from that we'll just look at the binding and start doing the project so because we've taken much time looking at this Let's run this guy. So you can see we are printing hello world. But well, actually, we think mm 
and see what what's happening. What we just did now is we already have a function that is defined here, but we are returning what a string. So whenever we call this function, we execute this function, it's going to what return what an address of what string. That address can change at any time. So, but we don't know. But whenever that happens, we want to what to return an address. So also we can have uh we can return an address of what of a function just like you see that other time that we're able to what to print the address of this particular function even now we can still print what the address of this function by just calling the f name that f name that we're calling is actually a memory address that we're calling where this program is so the computer will say okay you're calling this function you're trying to execute it okay where is this function saved is saved at particular memory because this f now will return the first memory block of this function where this function is being saved. So you to start following that memory block, and that's when he's going to see all these definition we did, and he's going to execute them. So even these functions now they are actually names, and they are keeping what addresses. So let's look at how to return what a function address of a function. Please Hello. excuse. This class yes. actually is taking too long. I don't have almost forgotten what we have covered. Okay. I'm trying to explain this in details, so but I will rush it now. I just want to introduce something to you. But you know how difficult it is to grab um, pointers. If we miss yeah, the pointers, yeah. there are something that we'll be doing in the printf project that it to sound so strange to you. But if you understand the function, the returning of the function, it will go smoothly. So that's why I was taking time to explain this. So, but if I think if number of us have good understanding of it, we can just keep it and go ahead with what with the project. Is that okay? Can we skip it and go ahead with the project? Continue. No, okay. Continue. So, all right. So now this particular word function is what is returning an address because we have address here. We are saying, okay, return this guy. So he's actually returning what the first, the address, the first block that this H was being saved in. That's what he's returning here. So as we call this function, it returns the address and the address is saved what inside S and we are saying that, okay, we want to use what to print the content that is inside X. So that means you can see how we change it up here that we got this hello world that is defined inside this function. So functions too, they actually what have address. So that's the point I'm trying to make that even functions, they have address. So even strings that you declare, even this main function that we just declare here, it has address in the memory that is going to what be saved. So and we can also what access that address. And once we have that address, we can execute the program without even knowing what the name of the um, program. But here, since we have F, we don't know actually the memory location. So we use F. F will help us both get the memory location and execute the program that is inside that particular word, location. So there is what we call what um, functions that return what that return the, the function. So what basically those ones does is they return what the address of what of that function, the first block of memory for that function, they will return it back to you. Then you you can take that one and what execute it and execute the function. So let's look at one. Just give a brief example, not a complicated one, since we are not going to be doing anything complicated in the printf project. So this is a function. Let's see. This function, I will define it in such a way that we're going to return an integer for me at the end of execution. So say int going to return int, but it's a pointer. But the function that takes in integers and add them up. So 
we can actually see They give it to me. So this function that is going to return the function is going to just be void. Just say it's void. Don't make it complicated yet. can see here what I did, let me name it addition, since we're going to do addition with it. So that's the kind of function that is going to return the function that. So if I see here, Why? So this is a function that returns what addition. So but let me define the addition function here. So let me define F here. F So what's happening here is we have a function down here. The function is called what? F. So let me make it this so that it will be more explanatory. 
The function is called f, but actually what the function does is it adds what two numbers together. Let me return this guys so that I'll be able to do for multiplication. Let you have what the f this one should have what for addition. You can explain this clearly. So now we have a function called what addition here. What this function does is it adds up two numbers that is being passed into it, an integer, two integers that have been passed to it. It adds them up, they are returning back to you. So it's basically used for what for calculation. Then if you come up here, we have another word function. What this function does is uh, it just return what a function that has been what defined here. So now, these are two functions, right? Uh, one of the function, it returns what a function to us. So we can decide to use the function. So but what it does is the address. You know, most of the times, most of our project that we do is just returning a value. So if it's returning just a value, we won't have to do anything. We just say what, we just give the name of the function and say, okay, it's returning what an integer. So in this case, we also look at when we are returning a string, then we have something like uh, car. Uh, then we make an asterisk saying that, okay, this guy is returning a string, a pointer towards to a string. So this is how you see this one's own looks like. So there's another scenario where we want to what, return what, a pointer to a function. If you want to return a pointer to a function, you can see this declaration is already saying that what it's a string that you are returning here. But in our case, we want to what return a pointer with what that returns an in, that returns what an integer. So we we'll just say what int. So the normal convention of doing it, you wrap it around what this asterisk now. So you are saying what the pointer towards to a function but this is how the function is what is being defined is going to what the function is coming back the function that is going to return the signature is going to have two integers this is how the function is being defined it's only this kind of function that is going to return so you can see our additional function that we have here our add function here it resembles exactly the same signature. So that means this function can actually return what? Our add function, our add function down here. So once we come down here and say, okay, return what? Add here. It's going to what? Return this function for us, the addition function. If we say, if we define another function that has this kind of the same signature, we can come here and say, we can return it, it will return it for us. Let's just try this and see what exactly we're going to get. So if we decide to say, okay, we are expecting an integer. So it's not just this, let's just name it what uh, norm. So let's call f but what f would do is going to return what the a function to us and that function we can pass two values to it so 
we'll say let's pass it four and six. So if you pass it four and six, let's print it out on what on our screen. So okay, it's an integer which is D. So I want to what print what the norm that it what you return. Let's look at something. I'm not calling this addition directly. I'm using this function what to return what the address of what this function back to me through this. You can see here, I'm actually I'm calling this f function. This f function is returning this additional function to me. Then I'm what using it. So you can see that you it looks as if it's f that I'm using. It's not actually f. When I execute this f, the f is going to what return what an addition function. So this is how you declare a function that is going to be what return. So imagine, let's try this. Then I'll come and explain what I want to explain to you here. So let's just do this. Expected because I know for attributes where I need to be there. Line 17 for token. Line 17. What I did, I don't supposed to have done that. So, sorry, I don't supposed to call it like that. So, since here we're calling this f, f is going to return the function to what this norm. Is this norm that will be what holding the address so even the f don't supposed to carry what these values so that's why we're getting that error so it's just going to what execute once it executes Add four and six for me. Return it back. <laughs> Oops. 
pair of two arguments. Two two arguments to function as a call of the phone is not the function of function point Let's do this. That's a point out to this guy. This guy extend the point. Few arguments to function f. <laughs> Call object function is my function to function. Sorry, please. Uh, I think I need something. F two face address for passing four and six. Let me try this for the last time. Hello, can you still see my screen? Yes, you can. You can see your screen. You can see your screen. Yeah. All right.
guy does. Good to go. See, uh, yeah, we're saying it's going to return a function which has these two parameters and int is in addition. So down here, say okay. Our windows is misbehaving. What's uh -uh. wrong? Sorry, please, pardon me. I just want to check this. Sometimes you just miss something, that's all. We are returning at. Sorry. Uh, we have F. Returning the function correctly. Returning correctly. And we are returning addition here, which is here. And we declare it up here. Since this function, we're calling this guy here F. We call him executing. He's going to work execute with no parameter and return add to us, which is outside here. Accessible. So, Give this guy here function. Let's see. We'll call 
F to give us the address. So once it gives us the address, we are saving this. In this. Let's look at something else before we come back to this. Sorry. Let me, let's just look at variables, how to receive variables, function with multiple variables. Then I'll come back and show you this again. There is something I'm missing, but let me take my head off it. The return, the way I return the values. We have been writing our programs with mean, okay? And most of the times so we end up writing void here. We write void, meaning that this guy is going to what? Return, uh, then we'll just say print, F. So what I want us to look at now, we are looking at variable functions. So we'll still go back to those points because it's still important, but I'm missing something. So I want to take my head off it. You know, we'll go back to it again. So print F. Let's say we just want to print something. Let's say, uh, hello. Uh, hello world that we do print. Okay. And it returns what? It returns an integer zero. Showing success. Zero here. Okay. So now, most of the time, if we go to run this program, we can see that we're just calling the command without. Yeah. Let's run it so that we we'll see what I'm saying. So once we come here, we run this, we compile this program, say file, C, we call it file, we enter, and we do dot file here for, we call this file. You can see that we are not passing any second parameter here. We are not writing any command. We're not sending any value inside so we're just calling the particular word command this particular dot four slash five 
it's the same thing as saying what echo when you say echo why you are not specifying the actual directory where this function you are calling it for is because this is a global what function that comes with what uh, with your installation so that's why we're not specifying but this dot that we are saying we are saying in this current directory execute this word this uh executable file named file so that's why our project our fun uh our function will work we execute like echo now you would be expecting what a parameter let's say if we say hello world now if we enter you can see that is what is printing hello world so also we can also pass value to our own functions during what during execution so let's see how that can be done if we say v i file let's see we enter here so you can see here main functions can carry what values also this void that we are saying we are saying okay it's not expecting any value but in the case that we have this we want to accept value so and take mean function takes two what two parameters the first one is what um axi is actually the total number of what variables that we're going to send to it including what the command if we say uh then it's going to what a string the two dimensional array is taken. So I can come down here and say okay. This particular value that we're saying here is it comes by default by main function. This int arc saves the total number of what variables that we're going to what, send it through this what through this value. So it has the total length of this. So what I want us to do is just to get them when we are passing them through command and just print them out. So let me just do this so that we'll just print them out. We'll say while uh, see while I I wish that we can do this and see while I see Not because to know. Not because to what to know. That's the final value. Would like us to print out. Of the string that we're going to pass to it, and to say what at b at i, and it out. It will be always on the next line. Next line. We're going to keep doing this, but let's define our I int I zero. So nearby is doing this. 
we needed to keep incrementing i here. Once it's true, it comes out of it. So let's try on our program. Let's say ECC. Okay. And let's run it. And you will see what it will print out to us for us. So this, you can see it's printing out what just this command because we say we want to print out everything. So it's printing out this. If we go ahead to do, we said, okay, print out, do execute file. Then we pass in other values, like let's say we pass F, C, 5, 7, W, we enter see what it will do it will print out all these things so it's taking these guys as what as an array then you can go through it and iterate but the first value of this of this array that we receive from our main app is what is the command itself the first value is the command so if you don't want to print the best, if you don't want to deal with the command itself, you don't want to print the command, you start your iteration from what? From index one. So it will keep what? S command, if we put one here, come out here, we do something like this. This is C. Just, just look at this. You can see that it starts from what? From F. So it prints out what? These particular parameters that we send. So you can see our function is behaving the same thing like as echo is behaving. Echo is taking a parameter, then printing it out. The loop. So you can see echo two is behaving the same thing. It's doing the same kind of thing. So that's how you can pass in what the uh, arguments during what during calling a function. So, but this one is for main function. So, what by the uh, function does is we already know that whenever we're calling our what once we define a function, let's see, let me see, int. See, in at, let me just say some more summation. So what this function does is sum up a number. So let's say the first one, let's say in it. Let me just say n comma. I give it in let me come down here and define it here so, okay I want you to do here is in sum fixing integer n comma integer m and It returns n plus m to us. So I think I've explained this one the, the way we receive this. So uh, let me try and execute this so that. I take some questions, then we go order. Maybe in the class. We are tired. So let's see. Print F. Use this. Print F. So 
PD since it's an integer, let me see next line. It's home. Four comma six. So you can see that this function is going to call this function and pass in four and six, and the value that is going to what going to return. So this is where we define the function down here, and the function is going to going to return the addition back to us. So we're going to print it. So uh, let's see how that happens. Once we see that, uh, I'll introduce the other one to you, where we can declare, we don't know the actual number of values we're going to send during execution. You can see we are returning what 10. And why you didn't see any values being printed here? You know that the loop will skip what the first value. So you're not going to print this, it's just going to print our 10. So it's still there. So in case you're wondering that it's not going to work. If I do something like a two comma and two four. And I enter, it's still going, it's going to print them out, these guys, and return this one. So that's for it. So we know that during our execution, when we're executing, we already know that, okay, we're going to receive two, two values here. So what if in the case that we don't know how many values we're going to receive here? But we know that, okay, it's going to be what? An integer that the person is going to be sending. So there's what we call what? Variadic functions. So those functions, they don't, you won't know the exact number of what the user is going to pass here. So imagine we want to add 10, 6. If you have so many numbers that you want to add up, well, we don't want to restrict somebody to 10 or 5. But the person... Go ahead and be putting one million what uh, parameter uh, arguments here, uh, parameters here. You can't keep putting one million parameters here to say that okay, we are expecting nothing less than what one million. So we can have a variable function that will handle all those values if eventually someone puts them up. So it doesn't care about the number. All what it does is it keeps what it will iterate over them and get those values. So that kind of function is called what variadic function. So and we're going to use it a lot here. Now function. So let's say this particular one now we know that okay is going to be taking integer. The first one is an integer. So let me say this. Is going to take in to the second value. So this is how you declare it. So you're going to put three dots. So that means it will definitely start with what an integer number, then so many other values will follow. So but in our case, we are expecting that what does that value. So here we can say okay hello oh, we can hear you sorry i hope i'm not <laughs> we are taking too much time but these things i needed to explain them because they are seriously the backbone of the project. But I'm seeing how I'm going to rush to explain this level so that we'll jump into what the uh, printf project. 
to the if there's anyone that has a question concerning what we've done so far, so that they will just ask, then we'll jump into the project that will just brush that particular part and just give us a sketch of what we need to do. Then we continue. Because I know most of us are waiting for that part. Is there any question? Anyone with any question so far? Continue. For now, no question. Okay, hi everybody. I think his network is bad, so I'll just contact him now. You just give me a second. Let me reach out to him. Because he just left the meeting. And before he left, I wasn't hearing what he was saying, so perhaps he's a network. And also, while waiting for him, yeah, I know it's taking time, but he's trying to break down the things we should know before we actually enter into the printer. He told me that. So I know some of us are tired and I cannot be here, but if that be the case, then you can go on and rest. The, um, the lesson is it's recorded, so you can always watch it anytime. But the feeling of being live to watch it, you know, to see how it's being done, is different from when you watch it from a video, because here you get to understand it more. If you have any questions, you might ask. So if you can still struggle to be here while we solve it, then it, 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 it will be of an, an advantage to you. But all the same, if you are too tired to, then there's no problem. You can go on and rest. Don't know if his network is that bad, but I'm trying to reach out to him. It's not connecting.
Okay. Hi. I hope everybody is still here. Okay. So I've been able to reach out to him. He said he's trying to subscribe. So he will join us in a minute. So please don't just hang in there. South of data. He's trying to come in. So where is where he's doing that? Please. Um, does anybody have anything to say? Dixon said, okay. Okay, well, nobody has anything to say. I want to, maybe those persons that were disturbing us from the beginning to, they are no longer here. There's one particular person, he's not, he was not supposed to be in this meeting. So I, I wonder how, why he was here and he was not understanding anything. So. He was asking questions he's not supposed to ask. I had to reach out to him and tell him that I shouldn't do that. Yes, so please, I apologize for that too. That, that is maybe that is a fault on our own side. And I think that's all we need to ad address for now, except for those persons that were just talking without raising up their hands after we discussed this quite well. Well, so please, does anybody have anything to say? Uh, hello, David. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm very fine, Nanji. How are you doing, too? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. So I have a question. Yes, um, we we was um, talking about uh, the dysfunction in some. Uh, I will I will copy the text on the, the chat. Can you can you uh, have you? Or can you uh, make a, an application of it? Because I can't understand it yet. Okay, I, I think so. Okay. I see typing or, or this all. Yeah, yeah. For example, if we are, if we want to uh, create a, a, a function called sum and we want to uh, have infinite arguments on it on it and we can grab those infinite arguments like okay, okay like like he, he did before or the, the, with the while loop okay okay if he did that if he did that and you have a question on that so please just hang on he'll be here soon and he, he will answer you okay, okay he's okay he, uh, yeah i think he, he's here already okay. okay welcome back sir okay he's with us so sir, we want to apologize for the inconveniences too no no problem uh <laughs> i don't want to apologize to because oh, yeah. But not to worry, but I want to know that, okay, we're getting something out of the class. Hold on. Yes, sure. We are. I believe I'm, I'm checking for everybody too, because I am getting something. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I think we will continue from where we stop. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Or so, so are we to join the meeting so to continue? Okay, I think at this point it, it all depends on you. You are our host here. Sorry, you, you are our guest. So if you think we should hold on to tomorrow, then we will. But if you think we should continue, we could go. But but then our project is ending is um, is ending the day after tomorrow, and tomorrow is is like in four minutes time. It's probably that's we something to do. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. Alright, let me continue with the screen I'm sharing. Hello? Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. David, I, just give me a minute. Let me switch my network, please. 
Okay, okay, so one. Okay, so one we have in the hand. Hi I, I I know you, you you joined us just now and, and you're wondering well, why the glass is quiet. Yes, yes. Okay. Our instructor is, is trying to prepare his screen. So okay. Yeah, he'll be he'll be with us in a minute. Okay, thank you. Okay. And you you can also help us mute your mic. Okay, okay. Thank you. Hello. Can I help you see my screen? Yes, I still.
we're trying to look at is the Vardic functions. So I think to declare a Vardic function, well, first of all, the first int we have the tree asterisk. So once you're inside the Vardic function, there's what you call what? Uh, the bar list. So it's a macro. So you can declare, let's say, bar underscore list. Let's call it what? Arguments. Let's give it arguments. OK. So I'll come down here and say, Var underscore starts. So I'll give it where is it going to start and what kind of what. Oh. Where is he starting from? He's starting. And come on. Hello? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's so? Uh, sorry, I'm having some hiccup with network. Sorry for that. Okay, sir. Yes. So, we'll pass in argument. So, we're trying to associate what this first value to this. So, you use bar stats, then comma. What are you taking in the first argument you're taking in is n. So we associate it with this n and it here. So that's what we call bar uh bar underscore n. So we will say okay and what argument here. So if we want to assess each of the value so here whenever this is how we set it up we say okay bar arc we associate it with this first attribute here so this first attribute that is here we've associated with this so now all the variables that are here now in these strings, they will be what pass towards this argument now. So whenever we call this argument now, we're going to get a number at a time. So as we keep calling. So well, let me show you how this goes. Then we say, let me define this guy up here. Maybe it's, let's see. Uh, so plus two zero plus wants to add numbers together. And I say okay, I do bar 
on this call. It's for argument. On this, I say okay, ask. Arguments. So, but I need to specify what kind of value I'm expecting. So I'm expecting an integer. So I'll just say it's an int that I'm expecting. So I will get this integer. So I can say, since that's the case, I can do a while loop since I'm going to keep calling it times and times. But let's just do something here. Let me just call it once. Let's say sum. Let's say sum is equals to this first guy. Then I just end this one here. Where I'm getting, I'm making the mistake here. Right. 
Hello, sir. Hello. I'm not sure. Hello. I hear you. Okay. Where do you go? Okay. I don't know. From a uh, uh, from a uh, um include the included header files. If we have yes. std args dot h yes. or stdio dot h. Yes. Okay, if we have it, I'm thinking since you are using var, var args, and we know we are going to pass more than one, one or two um, arguments. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking that if we can use a for loop to yes, look through the loop. var args. Yes, okay. we want to do the first one, then look through it again. But let's okay. add it first. Let's do the one, then we explain it. Then okay, sir. Okay. Yes. So you can see what I'm doing. Like someone asks all the other time, how would you know the file that you need to include? Like now, I have to come and check. So this is what I needed to include so that it was going to be what available. So that's why it's throwing those errors. They include the right header. Okay.
not the expected margin in the argument. Okay. Sometimes we'll be typing fast to try to catch up. If you see that I'm missing something, please draw it to my attention. Okay. So okay, sir. Okay. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll need to put something, so I'll have to be coming back to check all these things, so we can avoid that and so that we move fast. So you can see we're printing what five that's the first one inside what what we passed let's see let's go back to let's cut uh let's see and see what's inside our printing you can see that we're getting five here right so like what the person was suggesting that why not we look through it and get each of what the values so you can see now this first one that is here now is the first item on the list so you can pass it a command it can be that is a command but what we are doing we started with what with two this first one here stands for this int here so these ones now these are other arrays, but it was going to start from here. So when we say int sum equals to what zero, and we say var list. So that's when we start creating the variable list. So now we are mapping this argument to what to this guy. So but when you are doing the mapping, the mapping is going to start from what from this. Okay. So you can still have this guy here within this function do whatever you want to do with it it's still available within this so whenever we call uh, bar arc it's going to call this item so here now we just call it once so that's why we had only one if we call bar arc again it's going to get this one if we call another bar arc again it's going to what call this one so we can use for loop just as he suggested to what to iterate over them. So let's iterate over them. So I just wanted to show us how it works, what value do we have where. So let's see. So and in that instance, why sometimes you may have this first one, you can use this first one to identify, okay, if it is addition you are doing, to pass in addition. So you check which of the function is it using. If it is addition, then you're going to keep doing addition. If it is multiplication, you check what's the value that you threw here. Okay, it's multiplication, so I'll add this ones. So maybe we'll do that so that we'll see how it works. So that you know that, okay, this value, we're not just putting it there. There is actually use to it. There is a use for it. So let's do this. Uh, Let's not just do only some, we can do also addition. Let me say addition, then we do for multiplication. Add. Let's change this back to add. Addition this one we title it. Do we need to title it like that?
internet issue. Let me say, okay. Uh, so let's check here and say, okay. If we can decide to check this one to character string. Just to show you what this guy can do. Car. Car. So, state as a character. So, call it a bit O as operation. O P as operation. And then we'll see. Let's add this guy. Once we map this, change this as operation, then so I can say while. This uh... Sorry, please, I'm coming. Trying to think of something because you see why var arc oh, we're going to be getting error. So we'll see. Sorry, please are coming. Um, let me pass in. Uh, this guy is not empty. Third place in common. If we say var start and want to iterate through all of them, but the last one it's not going to be true because well.
generate this log. I'll explain what I'm trying to do.
So there's something that I wanted to point out here. Okay. So whenever you are calling this particular word function, this bar arc, once you call it, it's going to return what the value. So next time you are calling it, it's going to return the value. So what I actually did here was just to put a flag. Okay, this flag is for me to check. So before I enter the while loop, I call it once here. So the first time it will give me what? The first value for what? This five. So it's going to be what? Store here. So I'm going to check those. Is there a number? Is there a value in it? If actually there is a value in it, if there is no value, it will return what? None to us. So, but since there is a value in it, it will pass through this word, this while loop. And this particular word, then I assign then I said what? Sum up what? Arc. Let's see, uh, five plus. So that's why the addition wasn't what right. Because now, after adding it up here, I come up here and I what I override it to which I don't supposed to. So and every time I enter this loop, I supposed to what call it. But this first call that I'm making, I was trying to do it so that I will check here. So but we have to what correct this. I have to take this one out. So, well, basically, this is what a variable function does. It takes multiple words uh, argument. You can see that when we are when we are defining the word, the function, we didn't say that it's going to take only three. That means it can take more than three. It can take up to five or six. So, what I wanted to show you here is that okay, this first val um, value here, we can use it for something else. We can use it to check whether it's addition that we're going to execute, or should we add, uh, execute uh, division, or should we execute multiplication based on what the character that we're going to pass in here. So, based on time is growing, let's just break down the print F project into bits by bits, then try to tackle the uh, integer problem. Then maybe we'll see where uh, we'll get there because your project is fast approaching and the deadline. So let's look at what structures and what uh, and type of definition. Let me just do only one, then we can take off from there and dive into the project itself. So let me see this VI. So we can define our own structure just the way you have integer and the rest, double, you have integer, character, uh, you also have array that we define. You can also define your own data type, how you want the data to be. So that's what we're doing with the type of div and structures. So let me show you something here. Let me delete this. Play this one out. Play this. I need all this. So, but you can see the use of the a very big function. So we can call them like that. Call zero here. So to define the, we can define a structure such a way that we we'll start with what the uh, struct. Once you say struct, so that means you can give the structure a name. So I can say the structure should be what. Uh, can name it, uh, say my own int. Let me say I want to define my own integer. So I'll open this.
come down here. Let me close this here. Give it this. So inside this, my own int, inside my own int is a structure. So I can say this structure is going to keep two values. Let me say one is going to keep a character. Uh, this is going to keep a string. Then it's going to keep what an integer, which is what the actual value. So I can name the integer n. So I just define a structure now. I can come down here and make use of it and say, okay, the structure that I define above mine, I can create an instance of it. I can say my underscore integer. I can give it the name, say, say PTR, just name it PTR. So now I just define this particular this function. If I want to access the first item in it, I can go ahead and say, okay. Uh, well, let me do something. Let me just take this one out. Okay, to, okay we can have more than one, but let's just do this so that I will explain this one better. So, I can say PTR now. I've just created it, then I'll say uh, dash. Let me see, dot n. That means this structure here. So, I need to put these two here. So, it's a type of what struct line. Like this. So if I say N here, so I can decide to say it's equals to what? Uh, and so I say print let me show you the beauty of this let's just do it this way Let me just say this guy instead of this one. The way we are going to be use the way we'll be using it. So let me just do it like this. And let me just give it that. So this value now, this 10 now will be assigned what to this guy here to this structure because it has only one value. If we go ahead to say that defining this structure now we say it's character that the first one I will say x in what character then we can come here here and define it here. See takes in the first argument should be what let me see character H. Okay. Then, if I don't want to, let me just go ahead and do this. So, in this now, I come down here. If I say print. F. So 
I want to print this and this. So let me start. Let me say I want to print. Alright, sir. This and I'll say print and print teacher. The next one. Then comma. So I can say PT R now dot C comma PTR dot N or close it. So what basically I'm doing here, I've already defined this type here up here. I say it's going to be what of this type. So this is a structure. So the structure carries what? Uh, the first, the first uh, attribute of it is a character. The second one is what? An integer. So that's where I created one here. PTR of type what? My int, which is what I defined is my own set. It's my own integer, which I defined using what? Structure. So, and I give it what H and what 10. So this 10 now will be assigned, and this H now will be assigned to this one, while this one now will be assigned to this N. So if I want to assess these values now here, I can just do PTR dot what C. Once I say dot C, this particular one, I mean this one. If I say dot N now, I mean what, this 10. So let's try and run it and see what we get. This is the last, this is what we we'll look at before we jump into the project. this. So you can see we are printing what H and what 10 side by side based on the printing that I do. So what structure does is it allows you to define the way you want to save things, the way you want to arrange things and assessing them becomes what easy for you. So we are going to be using this in what arranging our what functions for integer, for integer uh, strings or character for, for float or on sign in or sign in all those ones so we're going to be using what structure so if i don't want to always declare structs here whenever i'm defining this if i just want to call just my int as a name i'll come here and do something like uh I would say type def. So I want to give it the definition now. So I can decide to say, okay, I want to just be calling it what? My int. I can give it any name here. So still go. I can say my T or my I. Anyone, just a short form for this word, my T here. So I can reference it here by using what this type def now. So I can add this to it. So whenever I'm here, I can still use this. This will still go. And I can also use this also. T. So most of the times you see they are using them. That's how they come about. You can see. Uh, once I say my T, I'm referring to what this structure that I defined here, this particular structure. But I'm giving it what a name. So I'm saying type dev of this. This is it here. So whenever I call this name, 
it means this structure here that I have. So let's try and run it and see what we get from it. So you can see it still works fine. Okay, so that's how we'll do it. So now let's go to proper into what? Or oh, please, is there any question if there is any before we I go into the project proper? Hello? Hi. Hello. Hello. Are we yeah, here? Question. Yeah, I want to ask uh, when you are printing out your results, um, why formatting it directly to uh, machine language other than using the dot e dot slash e dot out? I don't know. Okay, the e. Why am I not using the e? Yeah, it's the dot slash a dot out, I think. Uh, dot I e. use that more. Dot slash x. Yeah, to yeah. print out your results. So you see when I was, yes, when I was compiling it, you understand? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I give my file a name called what file with this command, with this flag. I say, okay, after you compile it, I don't want you to give it the default name a. I want you to give it the name what file. So that A that you are seeing, your own A that is coming now, my own will not come out as A. I'm renaming it from A to what to file. So that's why I won't use dot or slash file. So let me if I do L S now. Let me do this. You can see that. The executable is in what file A. So, but if I execute this, if I say GCC, I remove this name now. Okay. I say, okay, just compile this file now. If I do ls now, so you can see the A dot out is present now. You understand? So, because I didn't specify that, okay, after compiling this, I want you to rename it to what to file. So, I don't want to be dealing with this. So, that's why I was renaming it to file. Is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, let's go to the project proper and let's see what is being given to us and how we're going to break it down. Because I know that's what most of us. We're waiting for to see how we break the project down. So, number one, um, I think we can all own our, the printf project from our own end. In my own, also from the, the instructions. The printf project, they were asking that, okay, we can only use write, and we have seen how to use write. They also say we are allowed to use malloc, we are allowed to use free, we are allowed to use varstat, and we have used varstat, we have used var end. They say we can use var copy. Now it's used also for what? For copying. Then we can use var arc. So those are the functional macros that we can actually use 
outside. Any other thing, we are not allowed to use it. We are not allowed to use print air. We are not allowed to use food can. So those are the things that are traditionally we print out. So we are not allowed to use those things. So, and if you go down, you can see that they say, uh, I say, well, so you, 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 compile, you compile this using what GCC, they give us the plan that they're going to be using to compile the project on their own end. Uh, so we push it to GTOP. So as a, as a consequence, be careful not to push any C file containing main function in the root directory of your project. You could have a test folder containing all your test files, including main functions. So they are just telling us once you are you've done your testing, you don't necessarily need to push those files that you execute. So they will have their own testing that they are going to do. So our main files will be included. Will be included in your main header file, which is called what main.h. So we are going to create a main.h file. So that's where we're going to define most of our things inside there. So even our functions, we're going to declare them there. So you may want to look at the GCC flag for formatting when testing your what, printf and the standard of printf. Example of the test file that you could use. So they give us an example of the test file. So you can use this to test up all your code that you'll be writing. So order is going to give the right output. So for the first, first one, and they say write a function that uh, produces output according to what to a format. So they see the prototype. They have given us the prototype. So you can see they say return the number of what characters printed, including what the null byte used to end, excluding the null byte used to what end output string so even during when i was explaining strings that time that i was declaring hello world so there is one additional string whenever you do that automatically and the program adds an extra word byte that he keeps what um backward slash zero for you, which is an indicator for what for the end of the string. So that means the string is stopping there. So it does that automatically. So they are telling us here that we should not consider that particular word character in printing out as a number of character being printed printed out. So we are not going to consider it. So write output to standard output. So they are telling us that's where we are going to work, write our standard output. So the standard output string. So the format is a character string. So they are going to pass a string to us. The format string is composes of zero or more directives. So we'll see print F for example. So for more details. So you need to handle the following conversion specifiers. So you can see in print L, we are using D, we are using U, we are using P to print several kind of what characters. So we are using those specifiers to specify the kind of what characters that we are printing. So it's the same thing that we are going to build our own now. So we are going to deal with what C. C stands for what? For a character, for just a single character. Then S stands for what? For a uh, string. Then um percentage so percentage stands for what for just percentage it's going to print out what percentage so we're going to based on time now we're going to tackle the first one if time permits we're going to tackle the what the second one but if we are not able to we're going to shift it to tomorrow so that we will meet and we we'll really plan it well i will plan it my time and because this one, I thought uh, something that can rush, but I was trying to break it more into detail so that you have an understanding because that's the aim. I like to see that people have the actual understanding of what's happening. So now, that's, I hope you guys have opened the project on your own end. You are seeing what I'm reading from. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, so, like me, if I'm faced with problem like this, I already know I've done reading on it already. 
you understand so but if i was the one i would go through the documentation that they give us there is a document called what secret of print f so i have read that document and it gives me understanding of what how print f functions how it works so and i think most of us have been using the print f and we understand how it actually works this specifier if you put uh if you're passing in uh an integer you have to specify that is d and the first thing that you have to pass in is the percentage sign then the specifier uh, alphabet so with that understanding we have to break our project to handle each part of this so there is a part that handles what uh integer so if we keep going that we can want to write our entire functions for integer for uh for strings for uh, the percentage inside the same word file we know there is number of limit we can't write more than 40 lines of code in what in one particular function and that is going to exceed it so we're going to have our print underscore print f what uh function that is going to determine okay uh these are characters this one are just normal characters that we're going to print once you see percentage it's going to call the necessary function that is going to what handle what the printing of that so we're going to also have the what a function that is going to handle what uh printing itself then we are going to have also what a function that handles what our buffer so because we are not going to just be printing it directly on the screen so whenever we find a situation we first of all what push that thing into what a buffer that buffer we're going to what create a memory space for those strings after we've already arranged all the strings in, in the buffer then we'll tell then we'll call what a printing um a function that will handle what printing for us so you can see i'm talking about functions function this function will do this this function will do this this function will do that so that at the end we'll focus on if we are handling integer we'll handle only integer if we are handling strings there's a function that will do only for string there's a function that will do what for percentage so let's start from this so um Let me give, for example, our own web to keep all our words, our, our prototypes in main.h. So I guess everyone can still see my screen, right? We can, sir. Yes, all right. I can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So let me yes, we can. Let me see. So now let's start with our main header. Normally we'll start with README, so but let's leave README out of it for now. We say h main dot h main dot h. So we want to define this. So uh, and I guess you are also familiar on how to define your word, your header file. So if you want to define a header file, you first of all check uh because once you are including this guy you don't want to include it multiple times in your function so whenever something is not defined in what in your main function and you are adding this header once it's not defined that's when you allow it to be available you will include but if it is defined you don't want to include it so there are uh micros that they do those things for us so hash if we say hash then i say if not defined then i like naming it in capital letter say main.h 
pin underscore h if not defined pin underscore h then i'll come down here and say okay if it's not defined i want it to be defined then i'll say what it define mean that's called h that's how i like naming my own then i'll come down here and say okay let me close it here then i'll say end if so this if here i will check if h is now if main dot h this particular folder this main dot h is not already included in what in the folder go ahead and what and add it to the folder uh, to the um uh, mod module that we're going to be using. So here now, I will say it. Uh, I will include my files that I'm going to be using. So I know that definitely I'm going to be needing. Uh, I'm going to be including this library in it. Include. So I know there will be need for universal standard.h. That one, there will be need for it. So for malloc and the rest, I know I'm going to need uh, standard library for malloc. So standard library.h. So then what again? Uh, um, I'm going to need input output. I need that. I don't think so. I need it. So, but I know definitely I'm going to need standard arguments for our var uh, variant function that we're going to be using. So, the standard argument dot h so after i've included this so because i don't want to any file that i need to use this i'll go and be including i'll just include it in my head in my header file so i'm going to be available in all my in all the files that i'm going to include my header file main dot h yeah. so now i'll come down here and i will say uh want to define my structures here so let me call it what call it structures structures so i'm just going to have So I want to define a structure called what uh, function. So this structure normally is going to return what uh, is going to have the name of the function. So I'll say type def. Let's say structure. Uh, let me see function and look at us function. I want to reference it here on the score key. So inside this form, inside this structure, I want to be able to what receive a character 
and what and the function side by side. So I will say character here. Mm, should I leave it as? Uh, let me name it as type. Then come down here. I will say it's going to return. You know, here they say that uh, please, if you're not understanding something, you can call my attention, please. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, once I say something that you're a bit, you're a little bit off, call my attention so that I will explain it better. So now. They make mention of something. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find it. So they say that we should handle what? We should handle the following specifier. So how we know specifier is going to what? Be a character. So those specifier we want to what specifier once we have a specifier we have a function for it. So and we are going to store it in a place that once we keep iterating once we find it then we return it. Then once we return it then that function will what we handle it. We we'll receive it then we perform the execution. So the print the print app will be the one. In responsible in doing that, selecting which function should he use based on what a particular character that he found after what, after percentage. So here now, and they said that we are going to return what, the total number of what, of the character that we would we print. Okay, so they say return the number of what characters that you print. So the function should return what the characters that we print. So I will go ahead and say int, which is what the total number. So I will say uh, the function f that this guy is going to what score. So, and this function, I would like you to take uh, var lists. Into it as an argument. An argument. Then and also if it's returning the function for me. So if it's returning the function for me, I want to also take a character and what an int. So that integer now will be what I will use to determine the position of that character in the function. Sorry, that's the minute.
Sorry, please. So I want this function to also carry what a character. I really need to specify these things. Yes. So it's going to carry this then on sign integer. So it's a function that you will be keeping here for us. So the function will take values so that when we receive it, we'll send it in with what? You know, printf. Let me just give you an example of here what I'm looking at while I'm making these decisions that I'm making. You can see printf, the format of printf. Once you have printf like this, so first of all, I have a format. Let's see. I am. Well, let me just use this and say S, the string that I want to pass. Then I put four slash N. Then I put comma and I say what? Um, I'll pass a string to it. So this string that I'll be passing, I'll say is what? A bit. Okay. So what this print would do, it will first of all come and check this first character. If this character is not percentage, it's going to push it into what? Into a buffer. And check the next character. You see the percentage? No. It will push it into a buffer. You will check the next one. Is it a percentage? No. You push it into a buffer. You will check the next one. Is it a percentage? No. You push it into a buffer. Same thing for this space. It will do it. Once he got here, he will find out that, okay, this guy is a percentage. So that means there is a possibility that what? The next character that is coming is what? Is a specifier definitely is going to be what a specifier so now he's going to check okay this specifier that you send what type of specifier is what what specifier is it is it s is it c is it d so if you find out that is s that is there so he knows that okay that's why we are passing this character in here because I'm going to what send this character inside and I'm going to what pass in values. You know that values is going to take numbers of what argument here, just like that one did. So there is going to be what format that is going to what take. So that's what our print app is going to take. It's going to take a format, which is this string here, is the format. Then this one will follow. So, and you know, this one's now like in that other function that we did, this value is now is what we are going to what? Tie it to what? To arguments that are going to follow. So, once we see that it's S, we know that the next, this one now that is coming here, we can use our what? We can use our arc, uh, bar underscore arc, you understand? To what? to get it, let's say, it's argument that we pass to it. So that's what this function will be doing. So this function, first of all, it will take this biodic uh, 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 value, values, then what? Take the next value, because it has already what? Find S. That's what printf will do. We'll call this function, pass this, um, over list to it so that you will handle the next one that is coming from it. So he's just going to call the next one and handle what the string that is coming. If it is an integer, he knows that okay, it's an integer, so I'm extracting an integer. If it is a string, he knows that okay, this is a string that is coming. If it is a character, he knows that what 
this is a character that is coming. So this function will be in charge of handling everything that is coming. So we're going to define them separately. So that's why we're having this stroke now, so that it will make it easy for the underscore print f function to what to be able to call them separately. So I guess that's clear. So now we can have multiple of this here. You know, sometimes we can say that okay, uh, not just only strings that we want to have, we want to have uh, the integer we want to have. Um, you or let's say p then we'll come here we'll name them since the first one is string so the first one has to be what has to be string because if not it's going to what throw what an error because this guy now is specifying that is string and now here if we go ahead to put integer here you see here is five comma so you can see we didn't tally at all the first one supposed to be what? Supposed to be string, and we are passing what an integer. So these guys should what throw an error. So we are going to tackle this also scenario in our own code. So, but why I'm doing this, you will see why we are creating this once we go uh, further. So let's see this. Let's remove this. So I just wrote this to explain what. These guys are the parameters that we're passing in to is. So this one now already knows that okay, it's a character that we are sending to it. So and this one already knows. And this one also. So now that being said, we define our stroke now. So the next thing now, we want to handle character printing or let's say a function that will what that will return our functions for us so we can have a function called get functions so let's go ahead and create it so this function is going to return a function of type what integer and its name is going to be what get function so what will he do it is going to take what is going to take a character uh, format as a string that we're going to pass in it's going to take that string Yes. Function. So she's going to take the string, then it's going to take the index also. I think those are the two things that I need. Yes, uh, index. Hello. Are we still there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So now we are, we are here, sir. All right. So here now we the function. Uh you're going to the car. You're going to take the character. So that means I can give it what let me see string here. So that format that we are passing during the printf is going to take it so and you know our printf is going to what find it at a particular index so we would like to pass the index to that thing you can search you can use that index and take the particular word character from it so we're going to say an int index so let's that index so once it takes that it's a function so i'll close this then it's going to what the function so this is the name of what of this function guest function so when you call this 
this guy, when we are defining this, we have to what, pass this guy so that you buy is because of these values. We're going to use these values and determine the function that is going to return to us. So the function that is going to return to us, they have their own signature, and their signature is bar underscore list comma car star empty here to consignment integer. That's what it's going to be returning to us. So this is it. So and I want to have another function that will handle printing for me out. So what this function will do is to take a buffer and it will take a total number of what characters that is going to print. You know when we are doing that writing, we already know that we are printing in what standard output, right? Then we also need a what a string that we're going to print out. So and we also what need what the total number of what string that we are going to print out. So the same thing. Since I'm going to be having a buffer, and I will want to have that buffer to be as large as possible. So because I don't know the total length of string that I'm going to be handling. So but after doing my calculation, pushing them into the buffer, I already know okay. The buffer is going to be this length. It's going to be a particular length. Then I'm going to send it to the what? To the print buffer for me. So it's that print buffer that will be printing those after compiling everything, doing everything, arranging my character, determine. So it's going to what? Print it to the screen. So uh, let me define the one that will handle the buffer for me. So, they say the one that will answer the buffer, you can still return what an integer. So the name of the function is going to be what? Let me say handle buffer. So if I say handle buffer, so it's going to take what? Thank you. Please mute your mic. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you can mute your mic. Sorry, welcome. So, so now, uh, what this guy that will handle the buffer for me will do for me is. I want to add each particular point in time. I will create my string using what? Let me say I will create a long memory like this. So whenever I find a character, I want the buffer to be the one that will come and what and insert it at a particular index for me. So that's how I'll keep doing, keep handling the buffer. Someone will be the particular function that will be doing it for me. That will put the character inside. Keep putting the characters inside. Keep putting. When I'm true, I arrange my string the way they're supposed to what, come out. Then I'll call what print buffer. So let me use handle buffer for me. So what I will need, I will need the buffer itself. So and the buffer is going to be of what type? Ah. So um, let me say buffer. Let me call it buffer. So, and it's going to take a string at the time. So, a character at the time. So, I will say car T. So, that means it's taking a single character. Then, the index in this buffer, because this buffer that I'm going to create is going to have what indexes. So, it may be that, okay, I want it at index five. So, the buffer will handle it and say, okay, this is the buffer that I'm handling. Okay, this is the character that I'm going to insert. Okay, at what index I'm going to insert it. So I'm going to give him the index also when he's handling this. So I will say, okay, index of what? Buffer. That yeah, is going to use. So that index should be of type what? Of type integer. 
which is going to be of type int. I can make it on sign int, but let me just leave it as integer for now. So this said um, I can also do now I'll make another function that will handle uh, printing for me. So once this handle buffer has finished doing his handling, when, let me give you an instance, let's say print F, okay, let me open this and say comma, let me see five, comma, let me see, oh, this is a string. Hello, David. So, is it? So let me see what I'm saying is mm, the first of all, say. S, I'll print S. Then I'll say I am. So I'll add B. So see something, something like that. Just wants to explain. Please. So now, this particular buffer now, what you'll be doing is, once I find out that this guy is just an ordinary string, he's not going to handle this. So I'm going to what, throw the index of this because when I'm iterating this, I'm going to be keeping what their index. I'm going to be having their, what, their indexes. Even this one, I'll know his index. I'll know the index of this one. I'll know the index of this one. So once I see this is just a single character, I'm going to what? push the index of this character here. This is where it's going to come in. Then push what? Push the buffer that I have. Okay. Then also what? Sorry, uh, the index of what? The buffer, that's what I'm going to push because maybe I've already pushed some things inside. So the last position, I'm going to keep it. So it's the one I'm going to send it to him that will kill. This time around that you're coming in, this is the index. It's not at index zero you're going to start. This is the specific index that you're going to push this particular character for me. So I'm going to find this character and push it in here, send it alongside the buffer and what the index where it's going to save it at the buffer. So once this thing, I'll keep doing this thing, I keep pushing these guys, keep pushing them in. And once I find out that, like at the beginning of this, I can see that it's a percentage. So I know that, okay, the next character now is going to be what is specifier. And I found out that the specifier is what is S. You understand? So get function, I'll pass it to get function. This guy, I'll pass it to get function. Get function will go and get what the function that will handle S for me printing of S. So once he returns that function, so that function now, I will pass what my, I'll pass the next what uh, value using, so you can see I made a mistake here. So like this one now, I'll see. Okay, let's see. Or here. So after passing this value now to it, once I find S, because I'm going to have this function that will return what? Once I find this, I'm going to push S to it, which is what? The character. And I'll push the character and I'll push the index of where I find this S to be. So I'll push it alongside with this. So these guys now is based on these two. Now I will determine which function I'm going to return. 
So he's going to return the function based on these two words, these two characters. So if he returns the function that is going to handle what a string for me. So now I'm going to send that function. I'm going to send him what uh, this particular word, this particular um, parameter argument. Now I will send this argument to him and. Yes, basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send this argument to him. So how am I going to send the argument? That's when we define it here, because that function should take in var list, which then it will take what the character, which is what this sign here, and what the unsigned int integer here to indicate the position in what in the string which this is sent so now the next thing that i'm going to do now is to declare what what will be handling what the printing so after i've done all these things now there is something that there's a function should handle what printing for me so i'll say function the let me just call it and say handle print, but let me just call it print buffer. So what it will do, it will take a uh, car to what a buffer, take the buffer that I've prepared, and it's going to take the number of what and buffer. So that means the total length of what the buffer that I want to print. So I may have a long buffer, but it's not all the part of the buffer that I want to print. I want to print from one to three, or I just want to print only one. So it depends on the condition that we met, that we need at hand when solving our particular problems. So now we have these three functions based on the challenge that we have. I'm trying to break it down so that the problem can be simple when we are tackling them. So there is another function again that we should what uh, create. So after handling the, we have one that will handle buffer for us. We have the one that will handle print for us. We have the one that will get what the function for us. So I think we are set. So we just need to what declare. The function for what for printing what the character which is the first uh item on the list let me confirm from the project so this character that we are handling first so if it is character we are handling first the So we can name our own so let's see. So we are not through this. Hello, no, sir. Hello. Uh, this um, form you put at the end of this uh, print F. What does that form represent? The number Good form. The end will at the end of this one. The end bracket. No down. In this next, one after hello david after hello david there is yes. okay this one is just an example i'm trying to explain that is not a number <laughs> it's a number yes because it's going to be printed here okay you understand if i didn't mean it's printed this print that i'm putting here is for us to be looking at how printf handles his own so that we'll be generating what our own here so we are not going to use this here 
Yes, we are trying to emulate printf, but we are trying to build it ourselves. We have been using it, so now we're trying to build our own. You understand? So I'll clean it out, but I'm just using it for now. So our I can print still leave it. Okay. So our printf uh is going to return what? An integer. So let's call the printf underscore print. F. So this is the one that we're defining our own. So the first thing that is going to take is going to take what a format. Does this when we say format, we mean this. This is the format of the string. So these ones are what uh, arguments that is going to pass. That is going to be what fitting them inside here. Carry this one, put it here in this place. This one, we put it in this one's place. So that's basically what we're doing. So we say this one is what? Format. We call it format. So once it takes the format, we don't know how many that the person wants to pass through it. So we say this. So that's it. Now clearly we have what? The printf. This is all what we need for the printf. And then we come down here. So we can say. Um, have printf. I like to separate them so that we'll see them separately. So the one that will be handling the print car, so it's going to return integer also. So I can name it print what print car. So print car. So and we know each of these we are going to take in by list. So let me see argument. Let me call it argument here. Yeah. Let me put a value to it. It's the same thing here, the same kind of function that is going to return. So these are the function we are defining for car now. We will do for integer, we'll do for the other ones. So but for this one now values now let's take in argument. Then the second attribute is taking is taking what? Character, uh, which is what um, buffer. So it's going to take in what a buffer. Uh, so it takes in buffer. Mm, then, uh, at what particular point in the buffer? At what index of the buffer do you want to what to push this into? So we can say an int on sign int. So it will be the same thing on signed int. But this time around we we'll say i buff. Ah, so that will specify that okay. It's like this particular index that we want to. So you can see now we break down this into separate parts that we're going to handle. So we have print buffer, we have handle buffer, we have get function, we have the print f. So we generated our own, we split them into this particular part. So let me make something more interesting. Since we are dealing with print, let's just name this guy print also. So that we make it more meaningful, not just a function, but just a print. We define it called print. Then we say here instead of PR, we say print T. So we know it as what print T. So so we come down here. The first thing I want to do us to do is to handle our what print buffer. So it's going to take the buffer and what print it out. So let me go ahead and close this. We'll come back to this, but let's create the other. So let's create a file called what um, print underscore buffer dot c enter 
And now and see what will happen. I will just say uh, include my what my main file dot h and this file. So all those definitions that we did in that header file now they will be present here. Even those stroke that we defined there they will be present here also. So now uh this is print buffer that we want to do so basically what we want to do is just print it out and uh, we have already included that header in there on the main.h so i can go ahead and say uh int print buffer so I know that it's going to take what is going to take a buffer of this type. The F comma, then it's going to take the total number of the buffer that we want to what print. So say int say n of buffer and that's n number of what buffer that is going to take. So here I'm defining this. So I have to put a body to it. So, you know, last time that we were doing it, I already told us that, all right, I already give us an example of how write does it. So, after write print something on your screen, it returns back the number of what actual characters that you actually print. So, that's why I said the other time you can send in, uh, you can say, okay, print 20, but what you pass to him is only 10 characters. So instead of returning 20, you return 10 characters because it's printed actually what 10 characters. So that's what we want to return. So I can just say, okay, I'm going ahead to define an integer. Uh, I'll say num. So this would so I will just say count. So that's the total count of what of the characters that you print. I can give it zero at the initial start and come down here and say count is equals to our rights. I've already included that library already. So I can go ahead to use it here. So I wanted to print it at the standard output while passing what buffer that I received here. This buffer here, I'll pass it to him. I'm going to send to him. So I'll pass it here and say, this is the buffer that you're going to get those characters that you're going to print from. So I'll pass buffer here. Then I'll also pass the total number of what buffer that I want him to print here. So we'll do it this way, then I'll come back. So after he has done that, if I mistakenly deceived him or I give him a large number to print, but what he actually found inside is this. So it's just going to print this for me. So let me think of something. Mm -hmm. So okay. So I can decide to what to return. Return what count. So I will return count. So what this thing now you can see that. <coughs> I don't have to actually define these things in break like this. I can just sort of saying count inside of this, blah, blah, blah. I can just come and say, okay. But I won't write too many lines of code. Let's do this. Close this guy here. After he has done his printing, I want to return him. So let's. Okay, let's return this guy on the number. So 
there will be no need for me to declare this. So you can see my code now is just simplified. So I know that after printing here, after using this guy to print, it's just going to return the actual number for me. Okay, so, so I think basically that's just what the printf will do. Um, print buffer will do for us. Just this two line of code. We don't need anything again. You can see how simple it is. So, but when you are doing your own, you make sure you document all these things. You document that okay, buffer is what um, the strings to what uh, to print. The buffer is what the total number of what characters to print from what from the buffer. So um, this does it for this one. So you can save this, exit this. Okay. So now, uh, after doing the buffer now, and I also have one function that does what printing of character. So, but I don't want to tackle that one yet. Uh, I want to look at the. Uh, okay, let me see the functions that we created. Let's put there. Let's see. So here, we have handle, we have printing, right? Then we have handle buffer. So handle buffer takes in the buffer, takes the character and what insert it in a particular index. <laughs> so let's do the handle buffer. So I would like to rename this guy and take this E out. Let's make our code a little bit serious. And we can leave it anyhow. Whichever way it will work. So let me handle this guy. Uh, which one should we go with first? Yes, let's go with that one. That will be easy for us to do before. We go to the next. So now we have to escape this. We have our, let's create a file called Handle buffer dot c. So let's include our header file. Main dot h. Okay. So this header file. Uh, it's going to return the total number of what uh, value he handles. So, total number of insert he made. So, we're going to say handle what handle. Right, right. Let's say handle underscore book. Open this so we know that the first thing in handle buffer it takes in what the buffer itself, okay. And the second thing is the character that is going to what, insert into, into the buffer. And the third thing is what at what index in the buffer that is going to what, insert the character. So we're going to say I buff at index of this buffer. So this is it. So this, once we open this, we say, okay, fine and good. Uh, we now have this. We have the buffer, we have the character, we have the index. What are we waiting for? We'll just go ahead and say, uh, buffer, okay. The buffer at what? At I buffer. Okay. 
thing. That's the index. I want you to pass in what C. It. So once you pass in C to that buffer, I want you to return. I want you to return. Return. Uh, Plus plus, I want to add one to I buffer. I return it. Uh, anyhow, I can do it first. Fix. Let's do it. Plus plus. And you can return it. So you will add one because since the index, if we have printed, if we have added uh, at uh, index zero. So the next index, he should return the next index afterward, putting into the buffer. Let him return what the next index that what we are going to put when we have another word string to arrange inside our buffer. So that's what this is going to do. So that's why we are adding one to what to that index. So that next time when we are coming in, we won't go back and start from index zero again. We will I buffer must have what shift. So we're going to what after handling this, we're going to increase what I buffer in our in our program. So if it is. So I think with this. Um, so let me see. Um, So, if this, um, I'm looking at something, I'm thinking about this. Uh, if, what if in the case that someone put a string and exist our buffer, what should happen? Or what's the limit of our buffer? Because definitely we're going to have a limit for our buffer. So I will just take a, a number. You can increase your own whatsoever you, you want to. But I will just take a particular number. I will just check if this index that this person is passing to us, if this index we are passing, this, OK? uh this i booth so let's just assume that okay now the entire of our buffer length that we're going to create dynamically is going to be 1000 can make it more than that but let's say 1000 characters so if that's the case that means our buffer has what in exhaust state so we can't add another word. We don't have extra space left for that character to be added into this buffer. So what will happen? So since there is no space, that's what the same thing that uh, printf will do. If you give it a very long string and there's no enough space, you just print the one that you can print and return it to you. So we want to do the same thing here. We'll say what? If this guy is equals to what the total length of what our buffer, we want him to what? To just print the buffer. So we just say print buffer. So now you can see we are using it here. Since we have already included our main, that definition of buffer will be available for us to use it here. So, and what we'll do, since we already have our buffer here, we'll just pass it to, what, to print buffer. Which print buffer is going to pass it to what? To write a function. The write function will handle it from there. So you can see how the chaining goes. So it makes things easy for us. So we'll just say what? Print buffer, comma, what? So since we have, since 
we discover that this guy is the total length. You can go ahead and say, okay, print the entire length. So you can say, I buffer, okay, print the entire length of what the buffer, since this guy is already equal to it and you don't want to add any extra character, you want to truncate it. So once you do the truncating, what we want to do is, um, I buffer now, we we'll turn it back to what? To zero. We change it back to what? To zero. So I know the, what did I want to say? Uh, so, yes, let him do that. So once he prints that, uh to take the index back to zero and start from zero again and start pushing it in. Okay. so once he does that we know that there is no space to push it in return put uh buffer back to zero then continue again so start using that buffer again and start from index what zero so that's why i'm making it here so this is going to give this buffer it will print it on the screen it's going to happen very fast so you will notice that you print the first batch it's now adding the second batch to what to that buffer i hope you understand what i'm trying to say let's assume that okay uh i have a long buffer like this so I exhaust, I exhaust the memory space here. I have put too many characters inside this, this end here. I don't have any other space to put. If I come back here and start putting from the beginning again, these ones that I've already put in here, I'm going to lose them. So what I want to do is empty this guy. Okay, empty this guy to the screen, to the standard output. Then I will come back and start using this memory space again and start changing them here. Even though that, okay, there are still values inside, though, I don't care. But offload these ones. I know these ones are correct. Offload them to the screen. Then give me that opportunity to, what, to add this next character to it. So it's going to, what, to, add, it's going to what, add it here. Then we're going to continue like that because now, after adding this one now, it's going to return plus one. So if it is at index zero, he pushed this guy now back after emptying this guy since he discovered that this guy has been exhausted. So that's why I say you can determine, even though it's just small that you want to put here, you can determine to say, okay, you are giving it 10. Whatsoever number you want to give it, you can give it. So you will see where I will define this proper now function. So now you understand the logic that I'm trying to use here. Okay. So I want to say if we push to the buffer and it exhausts, just empty it to the screen so that we'll start at the beginning of the buffer again because uh, we need that space. Just like you went to fetch water and someone is pouring water for you into your jaw. So once the jaw has filled up, you can't keep pouring is start dropping outside so you just want to go and empty it in the place that you want to then bring it back and continue receiving then go back again and empty it until you are finished fashion then so the same thing here that's what i want to do here so once i discover that okay i've exhausted it's full the buffer is full i want to empty it i want to print it to the screen then the index should go back to zero and start from zero then here i will say okay push this guy here. But if this one is not full, just come here and what? Just insert it and what? Continue. So that's basically what's happening here. So when you are doing your explanation here, you are writing the documentation. You say this is what? This is the buffer. This is the string that the uh, buffer to what? To hold your characters uh, for formatting the buffer for formatting, then the character to add, uh, the character to add to the buffer, then uh, the index where the character should be added in the buffer, this is it here. 
So is there any question? If there is no any question, we'll move to the next function. Is there any question? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello, sir. Is there any question? Yeah, from me, no. Huh? From me, no question. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, but well, you are getting what's up, right? The explanation is clear. Yes, yes. Okay, oh, exactly. So, so, let's go to the next. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so all right. So we can leave the other function, but you understand where we are going from from here. Yes, I I, I understand. But uh, what I'm also looking for with the knowledge of a uh, prototype before, I think uh, what we only have on the tax, that's what we, that's what we normally put inside our main main dot h. But yes. with what you are explaining today, I think it is everything that we are going to use for the for the uh, project that we are putting inside our window stage. Yes, that's my own pattern of doing things. So you may have your own pattern. Whatsoever way you choose that you feel that okay, it's more efficient for you, you can use it. But what I'm mm -hmm. trying to introduce you to is how you're going to work. Break your uh, the entire project into bit by bit so you can see i'm formulating other functions myself some prototype myself those prototypes are not given did you see it in the material they are not in the material so the one coming up with it trying to brainstorm that okay this is the best way to go about handling this particular work problem okay 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 I guess so you can see for the first tax they already tell you that okay uh you're going to have what print f with what with constant car format so you can yeah. see i missed that so definitely we have to what change that also so you can see okay let me just show you something uh like this one now this print f we're supposed to what get it from what the documentation we're supposed to carry what constant here so and what this constant does is that it's telling you that what you can't change it even though this guy they pass it in as what if they pass this value as what as a malloc they created it as a malloc and pass it into you you can't change it once it's constant it's constant you can't change it but you can only assess it so that's why they make it constant okay okay yes so i can also let me make some little correction then i can call it a day Let's see I make this one to unsign it so that we know that we are not taking negative value we control the value that comes in so this one also a handle buffer let's make it unsign it so okay that's it thanks <laughs> everyone thank um, you very much we'll see tomorrow Oh, and David will communicate it to you people. So if I have the site. Okay? Uh, all right. Thanks so much. Uh, so thank you so much. We'll ask you questions tomorrow. No problem. So and good night, everyone. Uh, I this video, you guys. Maybe video good night. recording. Hello, Mr. Elisha. All right, thank you, David. Mm.